Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be discussing about increasing opportunity cost. So an increasing opportunity cost PPC is basically concave to the origin. Now concave to the origin basically means that as you go down the curve, your slope will basically get steeper. I'm going to tell you how do we calculate the slope and all of that. And first, let's let's look at the shape of the PPC. The shape of the PPC is basically bowed outwards, or you could say it's concave to the origin. And um, for such a PPC that has basically an uh, board output shape or concave to the origin, it's kind of like, you know, drawn like this. And this, this basically, as you're going down the curve, right, as you're going down the curve, your opportunity cost is increasing. Now, the reason, as you can, I will, now what I want to tell you is that over here you can see that as you are basically going down the curve, this is an area where the slope is kind of, you know, much flatter. And as you go down, you keep on going down and you keep on going down and you keep on going down. You can clearly see that the slope is basically getting steeper. So the curve is getting steeper and steeper and less and less flat, right? On this region, it is kind of flatter and less steep. But as you're going down the curve, each time, you know, you are, you know, on the lower part of the curve, it kind of gets steeper and steeper. And that is indicating that your opportunity cost would keep on increasing. And hence, the curve is concave to the origin, right? So for an for an increasing opportunity cost PPC, that is how it is drawn, concave and bowed outwards, right? And what happens is just that your slope basically gets steeper. Now, we all know that the slope is basically the change in y over change in x. And for a production possibility curve that is bowed outwards or concave, it has a negative slope. And the negative slope it will basically, you know, um, in, uh, indicate that there is an opportunity cost. And the reason is that as you are increasing the production of good x, then good y has to be foregone. Now, I've taken good x and good y on the x and the y axis. And as you're increasing good x, your good y has to be foregone. And that is why the slope is Will always be negative right and that negative slope is simply indicating uh, you know that we are foregoing good x because um, it's it's simply indicating the opportunity cost of producing more and more x now as far as the um, increasing opportunity cost is concerned now before i move on to increasing opportunity cost, there's another concept i need to discuss that is the concept of marginal opportunity cost because i will be using that in this video as far as marginal opportunity cost is concerned it simply means that the opportunity cost of producing an extra unit right so it's the opportunity cost of each additional unit of good x that will be produced and let's see how we use that so basically um, I have taken point A and point B. So let's 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 see what happens when you move from A to B. Now, when you move from A to B, right? Uh, what happens is that we can clearly see that from A to B, basically four more units of good X is produced. So we are increasing the production of good X by four from two to six. And in order to produce four more good X, basically two units of good Y are foregone, right? So two Y is foregone to produce four X, right? So the change in the y-axis is basically 2, while the change in the x-axis is basically 4. So as you move from, let's say, A to B, what happens is that you are sort of increasing the production of um, uh, good x by how many units? 4 units, while you are decreasing the production of good y by 2. So guys, the opportunity cost would come to uh, negative 0 0.5. Negative simply, in the, way, the, way, the minus sign is simply indicating that good y is being foregone to produce good x, and that's in the negative slope is basically indicating the opportunity cost of producing more good x. So the opportunity cost is basically 0 0.5, right? So 0 0.5 um, is basically foregone. Um, so 0 0.5 units of good y is foregone to produce an additional unit of good x. So this is indicating the marginal opportunity cost. That is 0 0.5 unit is basically, so 0 0.5 y is basically foregone, you know, to produce an additional, right, to produce an additional good x. So in order to produce an additional good x, uh, in order to produce one more unit of good x, you have to forego 0.5y. So that's what's happening from A to B. Now let's see what is going to happen if you go down the curve and let's see what is going to happen when you are in a more uh, steeper region of the curve. Let us, let's say what would happen around when you move from point C to point D, right? Now let's see what happens if you move from C to D. So if you move from C to D, guys, what's happens, what happens is that, you know, le, uh, you could clearly see that a change in good X is much less, right? The change in good X is only two. So two more units of good X is being produced, while four units of good Y is actually foregone in order to produce two more units of good X. Now, this is clearly indicating a situation of, um, you know, 
um, increasing opportunity costs and we'll see that why this is happening also this is also indicating diminishing returns to good x because as you are you know sort of um, reallocating resources from good y to good x um, less and less of good x is produced and more and more of good y is actually foregone so more and more good y is foregone to produce less and less of x and the increase in the production of good x is is less than as compared to um, the fact that when you move from A to B, the production of good, the increase in the production of good X was four, while the increase in the production of good X uh, in the area where the curve is steeper is only two, which is indicating diminishing returns to X, right? Um, now, as you move from C to D, let's calculate the marginal opportunity cost. It would be change in Y over change in X, and the change in Y is four, six minus two, because you're foregoing four Y in order to produce, let's say, two X and the opportunity the marginal opportunity cost is minus two so we can clearly see that your opportunity cost you know is going up initially it was 0.5 in the range when the curve was a bit flat and as the curve as you go down the curve it gets more steeper and now the opportunity cost the marginal opportunity cost is two so the opportunity cost the marginal opportunity cost is going up and from 0 0.5 to two and why is this happening? That is another thing that we need to understand because, you know, in past papers, they do ask us about increasing opportunity cost curves. And uh, for that, we need to, for that sort of a thing, we need to sort of, you know, explain, uh, you know, from A to B, the, that is the marginal opportunity cost 0 0.5. And then you go on explaining that from C to D, it's 2. And then you also have to explain the reason. Now, the reason why this is happening, guys, is first of all, what you write is that, you know, as you produce more and more of good X, there's diminishing returns to X that is happening. That is diminishing returns to good x that is happening to producing good x basically so there's diminishing returns to producing good x that is happening and that clearly indicates and we can actually see that because let's see that you know in over here how many good y is foregone so basically what what's happening is that you know 3y is foregone in order to produce 4x so um, th you're actually foregoing 3y to produce 4x and over here you're actually foregoing you know from c to d in the steeper region of the curve you're actually foregoing 4y in fact, you're foregoing more y. Here you were foregoing three y. Here you were foregoing four y, and you and look at the look at the uh, best part is that you're actually foregoing four y in order to just produce two x, while you were foregoing three y in order to produce four x. But in the steeper region of the curve, the the as the curve go as you go down the curve, the curve gets steeper. In that region, the change in the x, which is the increase in the increase in the good x being produced because the change in x is basically the increase in the good x. So the increase in the good x in the steeper region of the curve is much less. It's only 2x, while increase in good x in the flatter region of the curve is actually sort of 4x, right? So there's diminishing returns to x taking place, right? So so basically, you can clearly see that, uh, you know, more and more of y, more y is foregone in order to produce less of x, which is clearly indicating diminishing returns to producing good x, and that is indicating an increasing opportunity cost. Now, why is it indicating increasing opportunity cost? It's indicating because more of good y is foregone, right? Because, uh, you know, initially you were foregoing uh, 3y, and now you're foregoing 4y, but that's so basically you were foregoing 3y to produce 4x and now you're foregoing 4y to produce 2x so if you look at if you look at you know in terms of how much um, y is foregone for each of x for each additional of x you can see that you know initially it was 0 0.5 well now it's 2 so we can clearly see that the opportunity cost is going up and you write you know there's diminishing returns to producing good x taking place so more and more more and more more and more more and more of uh, you know good y is actually foregone to sort of produce less and less of x so to produce uh, less and less of x now why am i saying less and less of x because the reason is that there's diminishing returns to good x taking place so each time you forgo good y you need to you know forgo more and more of good y to produce an additional unit of x you can clearly see that because initially you had to forgo 0.5 y to produce an additional unit of x and now you have to forgo 2x 2 y uh, to produce an additional unit of x right now the reason why this happens is that um, you know your goods are based sorry your factors of production or your resources uh, also known as factor endowments right your factor endowments or your resources or your factors of production are basically they're more suited they're more suited uh, they're more efficient they are more productive uh, more skilled at producing good y so since they are more uh, suited, efficient, and productive at producing good Y, um, that is why if you reallocate them to produce good X, then obviously less and less of X will be made. And 
in order to produce less and less of x you need to forgo more and more of y so what happens is that as you go down the curve and you produce you know more additional units of x basically increasing amounts of good y has to be foregone right so increasing amounts of uh, you know good y has to be foregone or it has to be given off so the trade off is there you can clearly see the trade off but the trade off is actually uh, representing an increasing opportunity cost taking place because as you go down the curve and you produce more of x then increasing amounts of good y have to be foregone to produce an additional unit of x and the simple reason is that your that your factors of production your factor endowments are more suited or more efficient and more productive to producing good y so there's kind of you, you can you, you can also say that you know there's there's a certain amount there's a certain element of immobility um, you know immobility of factors of production immobility of factor endowments attached to producing uh, you know good x because you are you know they are they they cannot be you know uh, they are not sort of perfectly mobile they are not sort of um, you know um, equally efficient or more efficient in producing good x in fact they are the opposite they are more efficient uh, more suited to good y and since they are they are, they are um, sort of immobile so uh, immobile so you know if you if you use them to make more of x then um, in fact, less of X will be made as more and more of uh, resources are diverted to X and indicating, you know, there's a diminishing returns to good X taking place at the same time. The opportunity cost of producing those of those units of X will also go up because more and more of good Y has to be foregone since they are suitable for actually producing good Y than producing good X. So that sums up increasing opportunity cost, guys. That's why. And that's how you need to represent that. Make sure you explain it well. Don't just draw the curve. And, you know sort of explain the curve as well be clear to the examiner make it convenient for the examiner see you all around the next video where we're going to be discussing constant opportunity cost until then take care